Hello, my motor enthusiasts. Welcome to another episode of F1 Motor Fever Podcast. Hello, Enzo. Quite a start to 2024's Formula One season, eh? Indeed, William. Andretti F1 being rejected and a power struggle ensuing. Not to mention Lewis Hamilton leaving Mercedes for Ferrari. A real shocker, that was. Absolutely. After all, he spent much of the previous season negotiating a new deal with Mercedes. And then there's the drama within Red Bull Racing. Yes, Christian Horner, team principal of Red Bull Racing, is facing serious allegations. The stability of the team really hangs in the balance at the moment. It does, especially with many employees possibly leaving if Horner departs. What a time for Formula One. Can't wait to delve into all the details. That's right, William. A lot to unpack in today's episode, so stay tuned, folks. Good day, everyone. I'm your host, Enzo, known for breaking down the intricacies of Formula One. Hello, this is William at your service, always ready to share my insights on the sport we all love. We're here, same time, every day on F1 Motor Fever Podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with all our episodes. Now, let's put the pedal to the metal. Seems like this year's Formula One season kick-started with an explosion, even without a car hitting the tracks. Quite true, the traditional quiet times during winter got a real shake-up with the controversial announcement. Yes, Andretti F1, green-lighted to become the 11th team on the grid, found themselves rejected by the sport's commercial rights holders. Stefan Domenicali, ex-Ferrari boss, now heading F1, seems to have quite the fight on his hands around control of the entry list. Talking about Ferrari, Lewis Hamilton's departure from Mercedes to them is another big news. Quite a shakeup after 16 fruitful years with Mercedes. It does seem like his contract negotiations with Mercedes didn't quite go as he'd hoped, hence the move. Yes, there's also the unexpected accusations against Christian Horner, the linchpin behind Red Bull Racing's rise. Quite a shock for the team especially considering his instrumental role since the team was bought from Ford by Didi Mateschitz. Let's not forget Adrian Newey, whose arrival at Red Bull Racing cemented their position. An upheaval now could reshape the entire team's future. Absolutely. This off-track drama is shaping up to be as thrilling as the on-track races. Only time will tell what's in store. Red Bull has accomplished quite a feat under Horner's leadership. They're just 13 wins away from being the third most successful Formula One team of all time. It's remarkable, especially considering they entered the sport 55 years after Ferrari. Indeed, and they've amassed nearly half of Ferrari's total wins in less than a third of the number of races. I've got a mate who'd be chuffed to hear about this. I bet. But it's not all glamour in the world of F1. The pace and intensity required to work in the industry can be quite challenging. Agreed. There may have been many who joined the champions hoping for a glamorous working life, but couldn't cope with the demands. It's a demanding environment. No team can afford a member who isn't fully committed. Management often has to be ruthless, as we know from Genther Steiner's confrontational style. Absolutely. This is a world where even the greatest stars come and go on a whim. Still, Red Bull Racing had been a model of stability for a quarter of a century. Now, with the passing of Mateschitz, there seem to be cracks appearing in the unity of the team. A lot has changed in just 18 months. It will be interesting to see how this affects the team's performance in the future races. There's quite a bit of turmoil in Red Bull, isn't there? The conflict between Marco and Horner over the recruitment of Nick de Vries and then the rumors about Marco being ousted. That's true, but despite those rumors, Marco had his contract renewed till 2026. Absolutely, and now there are reports of conflict between Oliver Minzlaff, the new head of the Austrian parent group, and Horner. Indeed. However, it's tricky to understand the exact details of this power struggle. Are we looking at Horner launching a power grab? Or is it Minzlaff seeking the glory of heading up a Formula One team? I lean towards the latter. If we look at the leak of Horner's alleged misdemeanor, it does seem like a calculated move from within the energy drinks empire. 
I see your point, but allow me to offer a different perspective. Is it not possible that this leak is a manifestation of internal dissatisfaction? Could it not be the result of a disgruntled employee or employees who feel that their concerns have not been adequately addressed? Hmm, I hadn't considered that angle. I still maintain it could be a strategic play by those in control of the investigation. That's fine. It's normal to disagree. What's important is to keep an open mind and consider all possibilities. You're right. I'll ponder it further. It'll be interesting to see how this situation unfolds. These leaked allegations and calls for Horner to stand down paint a grim picture, don't they? Indeed. But what's surprising to me is the speed at which this narrative has developed. How feasible is it to clear up such allegations in such a short time? It's not feasible at all. Yet the media feeds off these crumbs from the confidential briefings, constructing a narrative that adds to the public embarrassment. So, where does this leave Horner and Red Bull Racing? If the rumor mills are to be trusted, it's looking like Horner cannot surely survive. But the real details are scarce. There's talk of a hearing with an independent barrister that supposedly lasted eight hours. And the outcome of that is still pending, right? Yes. An informed source says we might not get an outcome until after the car launch next Thursday. The focus of this event is usually the new racing prototype, but that'll likely be overshadowed by all this controversy. So, what could this mean for Red Bull Racing's future? Well, if Christian Horner leaves under such circumstances, it could lead to a disintegration of Red Bull Racing. There could be a mass exodus of dedicated employees who have benefited from his leadership. Could the Thai partners who founded Red Bull Energy Drinks with Mateshitz step in here? They could, and many believe it's time they did. They're typically quiet and private folks, but their public support for Horner now could be critical for the future of the team and the brand. So, we're looking at a situation where the future of a global brand and a successful F1 team is hanging in the balance. It certainly seems that way. The next few weeks will be crucial in determining the direction this situation takes. This stitch-up job does seem transparent, doesn't it? Accusing Horner of being controlling seems more like giving him the credit he deserves for leading a successful team. That's an interesting outlook. So, you're suggesting that this could be a case of misrepresentation of leadership qualities. Exactly. When compared to other teams that are clearly out of control and lacking leadership, Horner's controlling nature might be what sets Red Bull Racing apart as a successful team. But what if the goal was to push Horner to walk away by making these accusations public? If that was the plan, it seems to have backfired. Horner is known for his resilience, and it doesn't seem like he would walk away without a fight. So, what could be the most likely outcome in this scenario? It's hard to predict with complete certainty, but the most plausible outcome might be that some form of accommodation will have to be reached. An arrangement that would allow all parties to walk away with their heads held high. It's certainly going to be an interesting period for Red Bull Racing and Formula One in general. We can only wait and see how this story unfolds. William, what's the latest chatter online about all this? Let me see. Our first post is from Grand Zebra 1585 and it reads, quote, more confident Sergeant gained five kilograms amid F1 training rethink, unquote. Oh, that's interesting. What are the reactions to that? Well, we have Serena Hara saying, quote, Williams, we need more downforce. Say no more fam, unquote. Sounds like we've got some witty comments rolling in. Continue, mate. Basilis chimed in with, quote, the American way, unquote. And this sparked a series of humorous comments. I am Bedgel added, quote, cannot get more American than this, unquote, leading read-only PDF to suggest, quote, strapping M2 machine guns to the side pods, unquote. Blimey, that's one way to take things too literally. Anything else? Certainly, it gets even more amusing. Siberian Sun waded in with, quote, funny way to spell MK-19 grenade launcher machine gun, unquote. Ha, these folks do know how to keep things lively with their banter. Oh, absolutely, and it goes on. Prane909 remarked, quote, carrying Glock in his back, Carolina squat for FW46, unquote. And this was swiftly followed by Sinkadax, who replied, quote, Glock, nah, 1911, the real America way, 
unquote. Creativity of folks on these online forums is always a sight to behold. What other gems have you got there, William? There's a couple of poignant comments from Christoy123, who said, quote, Oh, so when he does it, it's confidence building. But when I do it, it's lose some weight, you chubby bloke, unquote. And Sanjay Wayne just simply replied with, quote, Lose some weight, you chubby bloke, unquote. Now that's a dose of reality right there. Anything else, William? Yes, there's more. Goodneed posits, quote, the only way is up for Sargent, the slowest of the 2023 F1 drivers, probably has a chance at outscoring Haas in 2024, unquote. Interesting thoughts there. It's clear people are watching how this all unfolds with great interest, just like us. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of F1 Motor Fever podcast. Thanks for joining us for a lively discussion on the latest in Formula One. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Remember, your engagement helps us keep this channel running. So subscribe, activate notifications, share your thoughts in the comments, and spread the word about our podcast. And don't forget to tell your mates about us. Whether it's during a round of pints at the local or a Sunday roast with the family, we appreciate every mention. We're here, broadcasting every day, bringing you the best of Formula One. Indeed, your support is what fuels our passion for this sport. We can't wait to share more interesting insights and discussions with you. So, until the next episode, keep those wheels turning and those gears shifting. Remember, there's plenty more exciting stuff on the horizon. Perfectly said, William. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Until we meet again, remember our catchphrase, pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold. Thank you.